Hello, welcome to PC Jack. Today, we're going to be taking a closer look at the first LGA1700 motherboard that I've managed to get my hands on. We're going to be unboxing the MSI Mag Z690 Tomahawk Wi-Fi, specifically the DDR4 model. We'll take a look at what comes in the box, as well as break down all the actual features and specs of the motherboard itself, and everything that you need to know about Intel's 12th gen Old Lake platform. So, with all that out of the way, let's get into the unboxing. So, taking a look at the box, there's a couple of things I want to note first about it. So the actual packaging and design is pretty typical of MSI's Tomahawk motherboards. Nothing too out in the ordinary there, but I did want to point out these specific stickers for TPM 2.0 and Windows 11 compatible. Not really a new feature of Z690, but there is a heavy push for 12th gen users to run Windows 11 for best compatibility, due to the way Older Lake's big little architecture makes use of Windows 11 CPU scheduling, so really no surprise that this is promoted on the front of the box, but still thought this was uh, worth addressing. Opening the box first though, we are greeted by the motherboard itself. We'll take a closer look at that in just a second. But in this small box, we have our wireless antenna, which we can install on the rear of the motherboard if you want to actually make use of the motherboard's integrated Wi-Fi, so pretty useful. In the box, you also get the motherboard manual, which is obviously extremely useful for the build process and also for troubleshooting, so I definitely recommend referring to this. We've also got a little USB stick, so you could use this for your Windows install or for your drivers. We've also got a load of generic MSI stickers, including their uh, Red Dragon logo. We've just got a quick start guide along with some random marketing material including uh, information for how to register your motherboard. So uh, pretty useful if you want to register it for uh, RMA purposes or rewards, stuff like that. Next up we've got our SATA data cables including a uh, straight angled one and a 90 degree angled connector. Obviously you can use these for your 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drives. Now, I didn't actually realise this motherboard came with this. I actually thought this was exclusive to ASOS motherboards, but clearly not. Basically, this is an M.2 screw, which typically is quite a pain to actually handle, but these new ones include a little lock or latch, which you can turn to hold your M.2 in place or turn to release. Definitely one of my favourite accessories to come with a motherboard, as those little M.2 screws can be a real pain. So, that's everything that comes in the box with the MSI Mag Z690 Tomahawk. Now, let's take a closer look at the motherboard itself. So, here we are. This is the MSI Mag Z690 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. It's an ATX form factor, and as mentioned previously, this uses the LGA1700 socket, which, as you can see here, is a little larger compared to the previous generation's LGA1200 socket. So, these additional five pins is the reason why you see such an increase in socket and processor size. To be precise, the socket is actually 7.5mm longer than an LGA1200 socket. So obviously LGA1700 supports Intel 12th gen CPUs, but hopefully we should see support for Intel 13th gen or Raptor Lake CPUs. All you need to do is update your motherboard's BIOS in order to do so, but this is yet to actually be confirmed, so it's still worth bearing in mind just in case for future upgrades. You can also see that this motherboard does not actually include a stock backplate. Typically, Intel motherboards don't actually include one as their stock cooler will mount directly to the board. And aftermarket CPU cooler manufacturers will instead provide their own backplate. So if you're coming from an AM4 motherboard which includes its own backplate, don't panic. Intel motherboards won't come with a backplate, so don't worry about it. In regards to our power delivery, we have a 16 plus 1 plus 1 duet rail power system and a 70 amp smart power stage. Out of the rest of the Z690 lineup, the Z690 Tomahawk actually has a fairly significant VRM design which will be pretty useful when it comes to overclocking, or even just for maintaining power delivery for 12th gen CPUs. And as you can see, it's got a pretty hefty uh, heatsink covering the VRM, so you shouldn't really have any thermal problems with your VRM. Moving on by here, we have our DDR4 DIMM slots, and in case you weren't sure, no, you cannot use DDR4 and DDR5 interchangeably on this exact motherboard, despite 12th gen support in DDR4 and DDR5. If you have DDR5 memory, then you will need to get the DDR5 version of this board. The slots are engineered differently, and if you try to fit a DDR5 memory stick into a DDR4 DIMM slot, you are going to have a bad time. But either way, there are four DIMM slots. By JEDCE standards, this motherboard supports up to 3200 speed DDR4, but you can potentially run up to 5200 speed. But this is not guaranteed, and it will vary greatly depending on your CPU. For best results, I would also recommend running this in dual channel mode for best performance, so running with two DIMMs ideally. You can use all four DIMM slots, but obviously this may negatively affect your overclocking potential, so still thought it'd be something I'd be uh, worth addressing. Next up, we have our free PCIe by 16 slots, so you have plenty of bandwidth with PCIe devices such as your GPU, capture cards and whatnot. As this motherboard also supports PCIe Gen 5, this means you are really going to struggle to actually fully saturate all those PCIe lanes available to you. but 
This should be extremely useful for those of you with high speed storage needs and maybe more complex RAID configurations that you're looking to run on this kind of setup. We've also got a PCIe by one slot, so you can use this for something like a networking card, sound card, if you're into that, or other kinds of expansion cards. Next up, let's take a look at storage. So as previously mentioned, with the huge PCIe bandwidth available to this board, we've actually got four M.2 slots available to us, with the second to fourth slot able to support Intel Optane memory. All of these M.2 sockets are then covered by these nice looking heat sinks, which is pretty useful if you put in sustained read and writes on your high performance NVMe drives, as they can get pretty warm. For more traditional storage though, you've got up to six SATA 3 ports for connecting your SATA drives. So this would be for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your 3.5 inch mechanical drives. As you see, we've got four over here and then we've got another two along the side over here near the chipset. Moving on, let's take a look at our headers. So for our four pin fan headers, we've actually got eight in total, including six system fan headers, a CPU fan header, and also a pump header. So you could use that for your AIO. You can see we've got two over here, one over there, and there's a couple along the bottom, and then we got one towards the middle over there. These are all adjustable through the BIOS, so you can control the speeds and also change from PWM to DC mode. For USB connectivity, we've got these two USB 2.0 headers, which you could use for devices like RGB or fan hubs for direct software control, or even just for your front panel USB 2.0 ports from your case. You've also got your USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, in addition to a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, for your front panel USB Type-C ports, which is getting pretty common nowadays with most new cases. We've also got front panel audio, not something I particularly use most of the time, but you've got it, so there you go. You've got your clear CMOS header, and then you've also got this little switch over here for your LED, so uh, if you wanted to hard disable the RGB from your motherboard, then obviously you could just uh, flick this off if you want to do that instead of through the software. If we take a look over here though, we can actually see we've got a Thunderbolt add-on card connector for a Thunderbolt I.O. card, so that may be useful for some people's needs. We've also got a 4-pin JRGB header for your 12V RGB devices, as well as a 3-pin ARGB header for your 5V RGB devices. Remember, not to mix these two headers up, as you will damage your components. Now, one of my favourite motherboard features is actually the easy debug feature, so you can see we've got these post LEDs to help identify with any issues while your motherboard is trying to post. Finally, we've got our standard 24-pin ATX motherboard power, as well as two 8-pin EPS connectors for your CPU up the top left. You can use just one 8-pin, but the second 8-pin can be pretty useful if you're getting into any extreme overclocks, but even one EPS connector will be more than sufficient for most users. That's pretty much it for what's on the motherboard itself, but we can actually take a look and see what rear I.O. we actually have available to us as well. Starting off, we have one DisplayPort and HDMI port for integrated graphics. We've also got this BIOS flashback button, so you can actually update your motherboard without even installing the CPU, which can be pretty useful in certain scenarios. For USB, we've got up to 8 USB ports, with 2 supporting USB 2.0, 3 Gen 2 Type-A ports, 2 Gen 1 Type-A, and a Gen 2x2 Type-C port. Here we've got our Intel 2.5 Gigabit LAN port, as well as our wireless AC connectors for our Wi-Fi antennas that we looked at earlier. And finally, we've got our audio ports, including an optical out, so pretty useful if you're quite into your... Uh, audio devices. So overall a pretty standard set of I.O. but more than enough for the average user. And that's pretty much it for the MSI Mag Z690 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of this motherboard. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'm very much looking forward to getting to work with this board even more in the future so make sure you subscribe for when I do a video looking at the actual overclocking capabilities of this board and how it manages to perform with a 12th gen CPU. So that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. If you didn't enjoy the video, then please feel free to leave a dislike, but please make sure to let me know in the comments down below what you didn't like about the video. All kinds of feedback are more than appreciated. If you are after more PC Jack content though, you can also find me on Twitch where I live stream every Monday and Thursday. If you miss a stream though, then you can check out my PC Jack VODs channel where I upload all of my streams and also include the archive of tech flashback episodes. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. But if you'd like to talk to myself along with other like-minded hardware enthusiasts, then you can also check out the PCJack Discord. If you'd like to support the channel, you can also join the PCJack Patreon, where you'll get exclusive benefits in return for helping to fund everything I do for you guys on the channel. You'll find links to all of those in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.